Good morning, Healdsburg Elementary School friends and families. Look who came home with me in my book bag. Yes, it's Chico. The other owls and all our friends are waiting for us to come back sooner or later to our beautiful school. And they're sitting on a bench by the window. So if you go by the Library Learning Commons door, you can wave at them. But one of the Chico owls tucked himself in my book bag and came home. What a nice surprise for me, and I hope it's a nice surprise for you. Today, we're going to read <clears throat> from one of Joe and Theo, my son's favorite books of monsters. I love folk tales. I love myths. You guys love monsters. You're always asking me for scary stories. Well, Greek myths are full of scary monsters. So today I thought we'd read about a few of those scary monsters. And while I'm reading, remember, these are myths. They're made up stories that teach us something about the ancient Greek culture and maybe something about our own culture as well. But they're made up. They're not real. And at the end, maybe you can think about which monster is your favorite. I know mine. This book is called Greece, Rome, Monsters. It was written by John Harris and illustrated by Caliph Brown. We're reading it with the permission of the Getty Museum that published this fabulous book in Los Angeles. Look, here's my little owl book plate. And yes, this book belongs to Joe and Theo, my sons. It's got a lovely table of contents packed full of terrible monsters. Warning! Listen up. The ancient world, Greece and Rome, to be more exact, had tons and tons of monsters running around. Or at least they thought they did. These monsters are found in Greek and Roman mythology. Fairy tale type stories that are still really big today. They show up in books and poems, in paintings, as sculptures. They're everywhere. Here's a bunch of these creepy creatures. Read on if you dare. Ooh, here's a good one. The first one is called the Basilisk. Here's an illustration of the creepy Basilisk. One look from him and whammo, you're dead. That's a Basilisk for you. And that's where we got the strange expression, a Basilisk gaze. A Basilisk was basically a snake, but a snake with a difference. It had the head feet and wings of a rooster and the tail of a dragon? How's this for gross? If you were stung by a basilisk, your flesh would fall off your bones. Ew! A basilisk often has a crowny thing on its head. Here comes his royal highness, the basilisk, ah, for your life. Ooh, here's a good one, the centaur. that was half man, half horse. The upper half was the upper half was the man part, thank goodness. Centaurs were pretty wild, like ancient party animals, you might say. Though one of them, named Chiron, was way different and became famous for his great wisdom and goodness. Hmm. Ooh, Cerberus. You might recognize this if you've read any of the Harry Potter stories. Three-headed watchdog, three heads, who guarded the entrance to the gloomy realm known as Hades. Some call it the underworld. Extremely scary! Cerberus would let the spirits of the dead in, but he didn't let them out. 
which he which meant he was someone you didn't want to meet for a long, long, long time. Cerberus had a run-in with the hero Hercules, and he's also part of the sad story of the singer named Orpheus, who managed to sneak, sneak past him. But there were exceptions to the rule, the rule being don't mess with Cerberus. Okay, we will. Chimera. Wow. The Chimera breathed fire out of a lion's mouth. As if that wasn't bad enough, the Chimera had a goat's head coming up out of the middle of her back and for a tail, a hissing snake. The only person who could get rid of this major nuisance was the hero Bellerophon, who managed to do so with the help of his beautiful winged horse. Pegasus. The Chimera was so way out that she gave her name, spelled it a little differently, to any fantastic dream. Are you chasing after a Chimera? If so, you're not going to catch it. I'm going to skip a few pages and see what looks good. Oh, wait, I have to read about Cyclops. You guys always check out that crazy, scary Cyclops book. So here we go. Let's read about him. Cyclops, a very violent, huge guy with only one eye in the middle of his forehead. There were actually a lot of Cyclopes stomping around, snacking on unlucky humans, but the most famous one was Polyphemus. He had a very unpleasant run with a clever Greek hero, Odysseus, and ended up with no eye at all. Ouch! A rotten trick, but somebody had to do it. Me peruse. Oh, Griffin, Harpies, Hippocamp, Manticore, Medusa. Let's look at her. Look at that hairstyle. The three Gorgon sisters were winged serpent hair monsters with really sharp claws. The very famous Medusa got an even rawer deal than her siblings. She was the only Gorgon who could be killed, which Perseus, the great hero, proceeded to do by looking at her reflection, not at her, in his polished shield. If he'd looked at her, he would have been turned into stone, just like everyone else. But Perseus was one cagey customer, as Medusa discovered. She hissed. She flew around with those claws, ready to rip Perseus to shreds. She tried every trick in the book, but by the end of the day, Medusa, chop, chop, no longer had a head. I wonder if you guys are getting a little bit curious about the myths that these monsters come from. If you are, you should look at some beautiful books of mythology, beautiful stories, many, many of which are available to all of us through Sonoma County Library. Just go online with HUSD and your student ID number and you can do some mythical research. I have to show you these old books that I have. This is my favorite, the Delaires. If you have a chance to look at this, please do. Look, we've looked at it so many times, the cover fell off. Another really great tome, which means a heavy book. A big heavy book is the ultimate encyclopedia of mythology. Please go do some research. It'll be really fun. Sonoma County Library. We can all get in and read more about Greece, Rome, monsters. But finally, I want to read to you about my favorite monster. It's a wonderful monster. <sighs> Who doesn't love a unicorn? end our little survey on an upbeat note good idea with the unicorn everyone loves a unicorn unicorns were horse-like creatures with a long single horn growing out from the middle of their forehead unicorns became really popular in the middle ages but their stories go back even further why were they so popular maybe because they were gentle and pure so pure 
They could take the poison out of a pool or a stream by dipping their horn in the water. And they were secretive. It was hard to get hold of a unicorn. In fact, so the stories go, only the fairest and purest of ladies could even get near a unicorn. With anyone else, the unicorn would vanish pronto. Well, guys, I hope you guys do some research today, and I hope you guys take some time to think about wonderful monsters, especially beautiful monsters like unicorns. I miss you guys. See you soon. Read on.